What is going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to do a commentary video on my Soul Eater. So it's been a while since I've done commentary videos. Going back to the old days where I post videos where I do the most damage. Back when I was a goblin. I'm not a goblin anymore, I promise. Yes, I didn't do any of the clashes for this run, but that's because other people volunteered. Normally for Full Moon Soul Eater, I would volunteer for Clash 3 because by then my meter isn't really synced up very well, depending on the damage, it really depends. But we'll see how I manage my meter, how, when I throw my skills out and all this stuff to be able to clear Echidna hard mode. Now, there were some couple juiced people in this lobby, like, I mean, everybody here was pretty juiced, but especially the scrapper and the artillerist, they were 1660 and 1650 item level, respectively. So, to beat them with my near free-to-play count, feels great. Now, no disrespect to any of them, so if you guys see them, they were pumping. It's just that I was pumping a little harder. Without further ado, let's see how I play this out. So, I'm going to play this. Let's go. So the first thing I'm going to do is stack to three adrenaline stacks before I turn on my gauge. That way the turning on gauge is four, uh, my guillotine is five, and then my reaper scythe as my guillotine is falling down is six to get that max adrenaline stacks. Otherwise, you know, everything else is pretty standard. You want to make sure that you know the boss's patterns. And if you guys haven't already, make sure to check out my advanced soul eater guide. I go into more detail about what kind of stuff that I do. I made a mistake right there, but yeah, I, I teach a lot about like what I'm thinking about when I'm doing my soul eater, or, or playing my soul eater. All right, the words are not coming out well today, but yeah, as you can see, just you know, pounding the boss. At this point in time, at least at least in the first half, I was losing to the scrapper, but I was in second place, and it was very close. Um, I do have to mention as well that I am playing Mass Increase. It kind of sucks that I didn't get the Bard. And the Bard was also quite better, honestly, than the Paladin. They were both Rat Alts. Uh, they both had maximum 50 Transcendence. So the DPS wasn't as high as it could have been with somebody with like level five weapon Transcendence and uh, 100 Flower Plus on all their other armors. But Regardless, everyone else was juiced, and we, we just couldn't find any good supports. Oh well. We work with what we have. DPS was still pretty high at this point. If I remember correctly, it, it, me and Scrapper were doing around 50 mil. Everyone else was doing 30 to 40 at this point in time. Um, but yeah. So how is everybody? It's kind of an awkward period where you just stand still. Uh, yeah, I mean, here is a big mirror mech. You don't want to greet. I, I mean, I saw some of those people greeting over there, so shame on them. Uh, but yeah, I'm not a greeter anymore. I'm going to be doing the mech perfectly. If it were me, I would have just rushed to the, the boss by now and, you know, started getting gauge. I did get my death order off because there was still time, but if if I didn't have any time, I definitely wouldn't have put that. But yeah, uh, also if you wanted some, some tips about kind of random kind of tips here. If you are a rat and you want to do more damage, you know, there are things that you can do to... You know, give yourself an edge. For example, for this specific mech where the mirror light passing mech, you want to be closer to Echidna so you can start hitting the, the boss faster. You know, these kinds of little things really help. Anyway, I think we are nearing, yep, uh, the first mirror mech is coming out. So here on, you know, various gauge building classes, but for Full Moon Soul Eater in particular, I like to throw out my death order, which I just did right now, um, as well as my soul drain, which I just did right now. I'm, I'm like reading my own mind right now. Um, but yeah, I do this to get gauge because you could actually get gauge during this meter or this mirror mech. And yeah, why not? Why not get some gauge? Because after this, it's a huge DPS window. So I want to make sure that I am ready for it. So again, I do a soul drain here. And then, now I'm almost at full gauge. So I do that, I stack my adrenaline, and then I go. And technically, I was also wa waiting for a blessed aura, but he was kind of late. So, it's unfortunate. Ooh, here, you just saw right there, so pause the video and rewind if you didn't see it. 
but I used my gluttony, which is a tenacity skill, to make sure I don't get knocked off from her pattern. That's very important to do is know your paralysis immunities and push immunities so that you can do more damage to the boss and get knocked down a lot less uh, frequently. I just saw that Arcana placed the poop all the way at the edge there. Do not do that. That's rat behavior. Um, but yeah. So at this point, it's still me and Scrapper doing the most damage. I think Artillerist is a close third. And everyone else is doing around 30 mil DPS. But yeah. Standard stuff. Alright, here. So, I do get my gauge here. But I don't turn it on because that's that's just a waste. Honestly. Um, so I just save it. Unfortunate, but you know, if I had it a uh, half a second earlier, I definitely would have thrown it. Because it's the the more you throw out your your enhanced skills, the higher the damage you'll do. See, like here, I also wasted time. So it's a huge waste of time that I'm still at full gauge, but I'm not going to turn it on because if I do turn it on, it's grief. So yeah. Uh I'll definitely be turning it on here. But as always, you got to make sure you stack up the adrenaline. So here I do Death Order, Lunatic's Edge. I didn't have Guillotine, so I used Gluttony. And then I bop, 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 bop. Standard stuff. So 142, so the, the boss phases at 137 here. So, you know, even though I got the Covetous Seed here, it's not greeting. So I definitely didn't want to put it in that left tile, like left of or like where I'm standing right now. Because then it would have formed a flower, I believe. But because I put it on the right, no flower. But it, it didn't matter regardless. We would have just, you know, done enough damage to phase to the next. So now we're in the next max of Soul Eater, especially Full Moon. But I think Night's Edge too. Don't, you know, greed your skills. Um, you know, I see a lot of Night's Edge Soul Eaters greed their skills because they're like, I don't want my edge meter to, to be at half. It's okay. You'll have plenty of time for it. Don't worry. But yeah, I try to use as much skills as possible. Just dodge first and then use as many skills as possible here. Smack those boobies. Alright. On to the clash. So unfortunately, we won't be able to see the clash scene. Because I didn't get the clash. That's all good. Was so close to grabbing there. Because <laughs> I think if she grabs there, then it halts all the stagger. She, she doesn't get knocked down with people in her hand. So it's it's a it's thank thank the Lord we were able to stagger before that happened. Um here, I don't know if anybody had stacks or not. I don't think they did, so it was kind of a waste of me to kind of stack my adrenaline before this cutscene. Because it ran out, so I had to redo the usual stuff, you know, get the three stacks, then pop my Z, and then use my guillotine rape scythe for my final 5-6. But yeah, so when you get into basement first on full moon soul leader, you want to make sure to immediately throw out your full gauge. Why? Because there is some downtime for you to get your gauge back. So here I got some, I got, you know, 80% of the gauge, which is perfectly fine. And here I used my gluttony to reset my, or not reset, but like kind of make sure my adrenaline is maintained. And then you want to send it, you know, atropine, do everything here, throw out everything. But you want to make sure you don't go below 61 here. So I did go below, it's 51 now, that's a waste. Uh, but yeah, you want to make sure you get to 61 health on the top snakes. And then you want to go back down to the bottom and do damage there. Because Thar will cover the rest. Um, and make sure during there is an invincible phase after the snake retreats. So you want to make sure you don't use your gauge skills there. As you noticed me, I, I held on to my skills until after the invincibility. That's another example of me using my Reaper Scythe for tenacity sake. So here I am desperately trying to get my gauge back for the second clash. Again, there's downtime, so you want to make sure you get enough gauge as quick as possible. This is one of the worst mechs to get because you don't get 
to, you know, farm gauge as often. But as you can see, I almost reach it. So there it is. Boom. So cleanly as if on time, my gauge is back. That's why you don't do the first nor the second uh, clash. That's just why. Because the first one, you have your gauge or you should. And then the second one, you have enough time to get gauge. But you'll see on the third one, it's kind of a little bit sus. That's why I normally go for the third one. Otherwise, it's kind of grief to let the spec classes go one to clash, in my opinion. So here, you can see that I'm almost full on gauge, but there has been some time since the snakes, if that makes sense. So I have cut into that time period of me being able to gauge, uh, build gauge back. And so I won't have enough gauge in time to burst it on the third clash. And you'll see here, because I'll I'll turn it on here. Yep, see? So immediately after this mech, this flammable mech, to here, I kind of delay my skills to wait for a blessed aura, but then I go, okay, wait, he's not popping his blessed aura. Let me quickly pop my skills out and then uh, get some gauge. But see, you see here, she just immediately goes back after that flame mechanic and i'm only at you know 30 percent gauge so normally here i would clash but this arcana said she would do it so i was like okay i mean yeah i'll take it you know and plus it's only like 20 bars left so she's not doing the full duration of it see here yeah again invincible you want to make sure you're just auto attacking to make sure that it's just invincible wait for it to show a number that means you're doing damage to it and then you can finally pop your skills Yeah, at this point, I am beating everybody. Uh, spec classes for the win. I always love the Reaper Scythe. It just looks like I'm spanking her with my scythe. Pause. I didn't mean that sexually, guys. I'm sorry. That that that, that was not supposed to be sexual. YouTube, please. All right, there you see like I could have easily just turned on my thing and went to town, but I knew she was going to phase. And so it is always better to save your gauge or when she's knocked down and, and you know it's a guaranteed DPS window. There she was knocked down, but it's obvious like she was doing her animations for the mirror mech. There's no point in doing it. So here, the whole point of this is to, you know, get Adrenaline stacks and then you go to town. So six adrenaline stacks and then everything falls down. Place. And then you want to make sure you save your uh, your last atropine. I mean, some of the rats save uh, an atropine on snakes so that they can have two atropines for the time period when you knock down all two snakes because you do get that buff. So I didn't do that. Um, I used my atropine on the second snake, or I think the third snake. Uh, no, no, I think it was the second snake. But yeah, now I have zero atropines. Um, but yeah, I could have had one more. And then with the, the defense reduction, because we killed the two snakes, I could have done more damage. But again, not a rat. I don't want to hear anyone saying I'm a rat. I am not. Here, I use my flame grenade because I did get targeted. And I want to make sure that I cover the 9 o'clock side. I did get hit by a heart, but I am instantly got purified. Paladin for the win. And we go. So I, I wait here. See, so I didn't pop my thing immediately because I had a suspicion. We didn't have jump rope yet. I was like, hmm, maybe she's going to do a jump rope soon. And what do you know? She did do a jump rope. So that is why I held my skills or my Z skill for after this. This is something, you know, very helpful to do. Otherwise, you're going to miss a lot of your abilities. You want to make sure you're in a nice, comfortable spot where you know the boss is not going to move. So see, I'm still gauging. But here I see, okay, she did that backwards pattern. But now I go, ish. Yeah, right here. Boom. And then here I use my enhanced guillotine because I'm almost running out of my uh, meter. It's like slowly ticking down. So I use my guillotine instead. And you just want to keep hitting the boss during this. 
Yeah, at this point in time, mm, I think I was around 38 to 40 mil. So, so not not bad, but not a, not great because of that last part there. Uh, it was kind of difficult to hit the boss there. But um, yeah, anyway, we got to the X0 mech with a minute and 20 seconds left. So not bad. Not bad, actually. Here, I do get screwed over. I get freed and I immediately get this again, which sucks. I, I think I could have had the time to space bar. I'm not sure. I, I used my Z skill there without any uh, yearning, which is unfortunate. But here, okay, so after she grabs, she will show the, the glowing stuff. And then immediately after, she will throw out her kind of explosion skill, which will knock down everybody. So I made sure to save my guillotine. Or not my guillotine, sorry. My, my um, counter skill. What is that called? Gluttony, which is a push immunity skill to make sure I don't get knocked down by that. That's another example of how you can use your paralysis and push immunity skills to not get knocked down so much and you'll be all fine. Here I use my enhanced guillotine even though it might not hit the crit. I, I should have used guillotine. Uh, I keep saying guillotine. I should have used gluttony there to prevent myself from getting knocked away. But the more you know. So here I save my Reaper Scythe which is also a push immunity skill to make sure I don't get blown up. I hover on the 5 o'clock position because that's the guaranteed counter spot. And then you go to town here. So we didn't even use a Xena and we have 2 minutes left on the clock and that's it. So 1 pot used, 3 atropines used, 1 flame grenade used. And that's the end of this raid. So, I mean, what do you guys think? You know, let me know in the comments if you guys like me to go over in commentary status, uh, fashion. This kind of VOD review. Because I, I mean, I like doing this stuff, you know? Just being able to talk with you guys and give you guys my thoughts on how I did my character and how I can beat these overly geared players on the team. So as you can see, it was really, it was pretty close. Because I'm not that geared. Um, but I did get the upright fighter underline. And here I spectate. So this is a scrapper with 1660. 5x3 plus 2. With 120 flowers and full level 10 gems. This is 1650 artillerist with 5x3 plus 2 with 103 flowers and full level 10 gems. So I did beat them and we did get the mount drop. But with that, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you all so much for watching. For my pineapple gang, if you're still watching till this end, I appreciate you all. Type in the comments, wings, because we did get the mount drop. Or not the mount drop, the wings drop. So, oh, I guess it is a mount. Yeah, a mount drop. Let me know. All right, I'm rambling on. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.